Is private money going away? Is private money actually drying up in this chaotic market? Is the biggest opportunity in real estate right around the corner? Well, if so, how do you prepare for it? Well, my guest and I are going to answer these questions in today's episode. My guest is James Prendamano, and he has used private money to close over 1,500 real estate deals. He's used private money to fund residential, apartments, and mixed-use buildings. So if you're concerned about getting funding for your deals in today's chaotic market, don't miss a second of this episode. Let's dive in right now. If you're a real estate investor and are wondering how to raise and leverage private money to make more profit on every deal, then you're in the right place. On Raising Private Money, we'll speak with new and seasoned investors to dissect their deals and extract the best tips and strategies to help you get the money, because the money comes first. Now here's your host, Jay Connor. Welcome to Raising Private Money, another episode, an amazing episode today. I am Jay Connor, your host, also known as the Private Money Authority. And here on the show, we talk about private money. Can you believe that? Well, my guest today has got a lot of experience in raising millions and millions of dollars in private money. And boy, does he have the credentials and the experience behind his name. First of all, my guest has been named one of the most 50 most influential people by City and State Magazine, which is out of New York City. And just to give you a thumbnail of his experience, uh, he has he and his team, they've been involved and closed over 1,500 deals. He and his team have leased out more than 1 million square feet of commercial space. And he's been a part of more than 1 billion, and that's with a B, more than a billion dollars in transactional real estate. The types of real estate deals that he has done and does covers the gamut from residential units, multi-mix buildings, uh, retail and office leasing, defaulted notes, land leasing, you name it, he's got the experience. And I tell you, he's got quite a list of um, big names that he's been a consultant to which includes Goldman Sachs. Yes, my guest is consulted to Goldman Sachs. And some of his customers, when it comes to uh, retail leasing, he's got the big names. His customer list includes uh, companies such as Nike, Nordstrom Rack, Columbia, Gap, Banana Republic, Brooks Brothers, Walgreens, and you name it. And recently he has launched a very, very successful podcast called Pre-Real, and it's already being listened to in over 60 countries. And with that, I'm so excited to have as my guest today on today's show, James Preen Madano. Welcome, James, to the show. Well, James, you've got all kinds of experiences we just, uh, you know, talked about. And, um, you know, you've got a lot of experience raising private money. And since this is now called Raising Private Money Show, uh, let's talk about private money and then we'll get into what your crystal ball says about this crazy chaotic market uh, that we are in and what you see coming around the corner. First of all, uh, let's be clear. Uh, first of all, when we say private money, we're talking about doing business with individuals like you or me. We're not talking about institutional money. So, James, what got you into borrowing private money? How, how did it all start? Uh, well, I, I would say necessity is the mother of all invention. That, that's a famous quote, right? So when, when you're doing deals uh, and you find yourself in a position where, if, especially in the beginning, if you don't have a, a proven track record, and the, the climate and the markets are not just just so it's tough sometimes to unlock that institutional money. So we found that uh, when you have the right deals and you've got the right team and the experience lined up behind it, private money just became the, the natural place to go to to get these things funded. So, you know, essentially it was out of need to be candid. Well, you know what, James, you and I have got the same exact experience. The first six years that I was in business uh, from 2003 to 2009, and my focus is pres uh, 
uh, single family uh, residential. I, I do commercial as well. I've done shopping centers, but the focus has been single family houses. And I remember uh, <clears throat> in January 2009, I had been in this business for six years and I was using traditional institutional money, banks funding my uh, real estate deals. And I lost my line of credit. And like you just said, uh, it was necessity. I mean, I lost my line of credit and I had deals on the contract and I just had to start asking my fellow real estate investors, how are you funding your deals? They told me about private money and, and there we went. So when you first started using private money out of necessity, how did you go about locating people to be your private lenders? So it's interesting. We had the same experience back after the 08 crash. Uh, we prepared for it. We saw it coming, you know, on the real estate side. We typically see these things a year, a year and a half before they're reported. Uh, so we knew it was coming. We understood what was happening in the market. I also had lined up several lines of credit um, that were collateralized by real estate. Some of them were first position, some of them were second position, uh, but they were great lines of credit, no balance, never used them because we were preparing for that day when we knew defaulted notes were going to be the rage. That was just the, the natural progression of what had to happen. And same same experience, Jay. They, they shut our lines of credit off. Um, not much of an explanation other than it's a top-down policy, which in retrospect, I, I guess I understood uh, the mantra of the banks at the time. They didn't have much of a, a, a choice, as painful as it was in the moment. Um, so here we are. And we're, we're looking to transact. We're looking to, to take this next step in our careers and, and move a little bit uh, into the equity side more while we were building the brokerage business. Uh, and what we found was through hard money lenders, believe it or not, that's where we first started to make the connections on the private money side. Uh, we had done a number of deals with hard money. And after those deals get rolling and you start to build a bit of a relationship uh, and you get to the money behind the the conduits or the brokers connecting you to the hard money, uh, it was an opportunity for us to just build those relationships and, and talk about uh, perhaps different pathways moving forward. Uh, so for us, it was, again, the, the credit lines were shut and it was uh, we still had great business deals, deals that made all the sense in the world. And after taking down and a number of, of hard money deals, I mean, we're talking 16 plus two, uh, 18 plus four, you know, these were expensive expensive deals. Um, that's how we initially met some of the investors. And some of them we had in a book of business on the brokerage side, but we hadn't explored the private money option. Uh, and, you know, the deals were still there. So we said, let's let's just start opening the, the discussion here and, and start communicating and talking about opportunities that, that we have in front of us and see if there wasn't a better way for us to do this than the hard money. You just made an excellent point by mentioning the kind of interest rates and points uh, that you were paying for hard money. Uh, I think you mentioned 16% uh, interest, and then you had points or origination fees of either 2% or 4%. And just put that in contrast to private money and the kind of interest that we pay. Uh, you know, right now, I pay uh, my private lenders 8%. In first position, uh, ten percent in second position, and you know one question that I'm getting in this market is, well, Jay, do you see interest rates going up uh, as far as what you're going to be paying uh, private lenders since all the rest of the interest rates are going up? And the answer is no. And here's why: private money interest, the amount that we pay, is dependent on what we offer, right? So. You know, the traditional way, James, as you know, of borrowing money for real estate is you go to the, you know, tradition, you go to the institutional money, you go to the bank or you get on your hands and knees and you put your hands underneath your chin and you say, please give me a mortgage. Please give me a mortgage. You know, please fund my deal. And, you know, in this world of private money that you and I are talking about is we're not chasing, we're not begging, we're not selling. We're actually offering a mortgage. We're not trying to talk anybody into giving us a mortgage. We're actually offering a mortgage. You know, people ask me all the time, they say, Jay, how do you have millions and millions and millions of dollars of private money available to fund your deals? And you never ask for money. And the answer is very, very simple. And that is I put on my teacher hat and I teach people, individuals, what private money is, how they can get high rates of return, 
you know, safely and securely. So, um, James, I know you have experienced the same thing. I mean, it's a 180 degree shift on versus begging for a mortgage versus what you're offering an opportunity to people. What's your comment on that? So it, it, without a doubt, the, the end result is you, you do get to set terms, fair, marketable terms. Of course, it, it has to be equitable for the investor. But uh, what I think is critical here is understanding the realities that sometimes uh, on the ground, we don't see quite clearly. And, and by that, I mean, as a deal maker, oftentimes we're chasing, right? We're feeling like uh, if I just had access to the capital, if I just had access to the money, I know there's a lot of young deal makers out there uh, and, and they could be young in age or young in their career uh, that don't quite understand that once you have the deal, if you have a solid business plan and you've got the experience and you have the deal, that's the holy grail. It, it's not the other way around. And it took me a decade and a half to understand that. Uh, we, we project our issues onto the situation, right? We don't have the capital, but we have the deal. Ooh, how, how are we going to approach this? How are we going to be able to unlock that capital? And when you've got the deal and you've got the experience and you have the sound business plan, you really can set terms, of course, within reason. And of course, they have to be equitable for both sides because we want these to be ongoing relationships, Jay, right? We don't do this once with an investor and we're done. Uh, most of us, as we hit our stride, we do this over and over and over and recycling money uh, with, with the same investors time and time again. And for them, the challenge is finding those safe deals, finding a reliable deal maker that understands the markets and can shepherd their money through uh, in the safest way possible, You know, which to me has always been and always will be real estate. So it, it's a matter of, I think, optics and perception and understanding uh, that you are the asset. If you've got those deals and, and you, you you know what you're doing, obviously in the marketplace, you really can set the terms here and, and make a deal that works for both parties. The hard money, it has a place. Institutional money, of course, has a place. Uh, but the private money really is where, where it's at. James, what kind of an impact as far as profit? In other words, what kind of profits have you made on deals because you had the private money and the relationships in place. And, you know, there's a keyword right there. A, a synonym for private money is relationship money. Either relationship that you've already got in place or, you know, you learn how to start growing your network so you have additional new relationships that you can nurture and start doing business with. But just what kind of an impact has private money had on your business? It's impossible to quantify. Candidly, you know, when when you're doing deals and you're 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 taking the hard money stuff, uh, and again, there's a place for it. But when you're you're performing your deal and you're looking at eighteen plus four, I think is the highest we ever paid. And I remember it was a, a savvy, savvy uh, investor had said, "Well, you know, usury is twenty four percent. I'm doing you a favor here at eighteen plus four. Uh, that's a partner." You know, that, that's almost a quarter of your deal that you're paying out. And there's all sorts of guarantees and confessions of judgments and all sorts of ugly paperwork you sign when at least we were signing when we were taking those deals. So when you, you realize there's this world of folks out there that don't have an end to real estate, they don't have the experience, they don't understand deals the way we do. It's tough to put a value on that, Jay. And I think that we sell ourselves short as deal makers far too often. Um, and when you you recognize that there is a massive amount of money on the sidelines, always good market, bad market, there are always folks looking for safe places to put their money that's going to outperform whatever fund or opportunity that they're currently in. That's generally just a few points. Uh, so it, it's really, the, it, it's hard to, to put a dollar on it because it's as big as your deals can be. We've done multi, multi-million dollar shopping centers uh, and we've done $150,000 homes. Uh, the percentages are, are where you win, right? The difference between uh, the non-traditional lending sources we're talking about or private money uh, and the ability to scale and continue to renew these lines and, and these opportunities as you go from deal to deal. It's it's as big as your bandwidth and your deal will allow. You know, James, you just mentioned that, um, you know, we're offering private lenders uh, an opportunity. 
Um, and my question is, is, you know, where else can an individual that's got investment capital or retirement funds or whatever, uh, where else can they put their money safely and securely and get the kinds of rates of return that we pay them, even at 8%. The reason I raise that question is the local bank right now, even with the increase in interest rates that we've seen, been seeing in this market now for some time, which are crazy. Anyway, um, right now, I just checked it last week. You know, every Thursday, USA Today newspaper publishes on the front page of the money section the national average certificate of deposit yields that banks and credit unions are paying in the United States. And as of last Thursday's publication, James, the average 12-month certificate of deposit yield in the local bank is 0.97%. Less than 1% is what the banks and credit unions are paying out. And you come along and, you know, ask, I mean, and you offer someone 8%. Well, my lands, that's eight times more than they can get, you know, just by putting it in some kind of, you know, traditional investment like that. James, what advice would you give to um, someone that's, that's a real estate investor? Maybe they're new. Maybe they have never raised private money and they're looking to raise private money. Given your experience, how would you, uh, what advice would you give them on how to start? <laughs> Do you want my honest answer? Speak to Jay. Sure. <laughs> I talk to you. <laughs> I'm 25 years in and I learn more in an hour with you than I have in quite some time. So uh, I really enjoyed our conversation. But uh, short of speaking to you, uh, I would tell them that uh, mindset, again, uh, I don't mean to harp on it, but I really think that it, it's so important. There are some opportunities now as as rates are rapidly increasing where you can go get three, three and a half percent from your bank if you tie your money up in, in different opportunities that they're offering. But those opportunities are for a moment in time. It's typically for a 10 or 11 month uh, stretch and they'll recast based on where rates are. This is a cycle, folks. It goes up and it goes down and it comes back up and it goes back down. We forget that when we're in it because the stakes are so high. I get that. Uh, but it's important to keep an eye on tomorrow and understand what tomorrow is going to look like. And it's important for your investors to keep an eye on that also. So uh, if if we start to get pushback from investors saying, oh, I can go get, you know, three and a half or four percent in, in the bank and, and tie it up for 10 months. Absolutely. God bless. Go do it. But when you, you call me next time, you won't be at the top of the list. Right. This is something we've done through good markets and bad. Uh, it's something that We've been blessed and we've delivered on time and time again. Um, and it's, you know, build those relationships, understand you're the value, be fair uh, in your in your offerings to your private investors. Make sure that you've got a rock solid business plan. Uh, make sure that your your fiduciary is in the right place, that their money had, had damn well be as important, if not more important than your money in any transaction. That, that's the way we've always looked at it. We've been very conservative and, and you can be conservative and do really, really well. Well, James, I appreciate the shout out on uh, telling uh, telling them to talk to Jay if you want to start out on private money. So let's give away a, a fantastic, valuable gift here. I'm so excited. I just finished writing uh, my brand new private money guide, which is called Seven Reasons Why Private Money Will Skyrocket Your Real Estate Business and help you build incredible wealth. This will get you on the fast track to private money and put you in a position very, very quickly to where you don't have to worry about on missing out on any deals or opportunities because you didn't have the funding. You can download this private money guide for free at www.jconnor, and I'm with an E-R, not an O-R, www.jayconner.com forward slash money guide. That's J Connor, J A Y C O N N E R dot com forward slash money guide. And that will get you on the fast track to private money. James, um, I briefly mentioned, but I want to dive into it with you now. There's a lot of um, concern, there's a lot of fear, there's a lot of anxiety out in the marketplace right now. And um, rightfully so. 
I mean, we've got inflation at a 40 year high, and that's using the rates that the government has put out, which I do not believe. I think inflation is even much higher than what's being published. Um, you've got mortgage interest rates that have skyrocketed. Um, and of course, I get it. I mean, one of, the, one of the only ways they can control inflation is to slow down the spending by raising interest rates. Um, you got real estate values that have shot up 25% in one year. And now this year, it's pulling back. Um, what do you, where do you see this real estate market going, uh, say through the rest of this year and right on into, uh, uh, through 2023, is there a cause for concern? What do people do to, uh, prepare themselves in order to invest the wisest? Yeah. So there, there's cause for concern if you're not prepared. Um, if you are prepared, then this, this, where is it viewing this as the greatest buying opportunity of our our life? We think this is going to be uh, a, a bigger opportunity than we saw through 2008 up to 2010, 11, even some of 12. Um, but you've got to be prepared, right? The, the, the key for us is sustainability, making sure that you can get to the other side. Uh, we started to caution clients a year and a half, two years ago. If you were going into uh, all the rage was the multifamilies then, right? How many doors did you have and how many deals were you getting invested in? And, you know, I've never seen a pro forma that didn't look good on first blush. And as you start to pour through these pro formas and you start to really take a deep dive, that's where you can start to see some of the cracks and, and some of the weaknesses there. Uh, the ability to secure debt at a fixed rate for a a specified period of time that you believe will get you to the other side of the rainbow is the key. For us, uh, we believe this is a cycle. Uh, we Yes, this is going to be one of the, the, the more difficult ones to, to get through. Uh, but again, that, that breeds opportunity. And if you have access to capital uh, and fixed rate debt for a significant amount of time, significant is three, four, five years, we believe that comfortably gets you to the other side of the rainbow, if you will. Man, this is this is this is it. This is the time that you should be doubling down. At least that that's what we're doing. We're doubling down on the opportunities here. When we spoke on on my show, Jay, I, I had said uh, off air before we started. I didn't know if there was a better time in history to have you on the show because finding this alternative for financing um, is going to be everything. The banks are going to continue to tighten up. We think the bigger banks are going to sit on the sidelines for a bit. The small to mid cap banks are going to experience a, a, a bit of pain as those deposits start to drop, the, the, the COVID money has burned off, um, those deposits start to drop in the banks, yet the banks still have that outstanding debt. And it'll be interesting to see how they, they navigate when those notes come due. A lot of one, three, five-year money was issued two and three years ago. That's going to put you dead smack in the middle of this thing uh, and you're going to be seeking ways to refi out, even if you're a performing note, even if you have a performing asset. Uh, you know, there was a period of time not too long ago where there was no debt. We, we were talking to some syndicators about six months ago and they said, well, the worst thing that happens is we don't quite hit our numbers and, you know, the, uh, the, the rents aren't quite where we think they'll be. And maybe we can't pull as much equity out as we thought. And I said, guys, the, no, the, the worst thing is you can't get debt, institutional debt. Right. You can't get refinanced out. That's the worst case. This offers an amazing opportunity to line those exits up and have the cash available so that you can replace it at a reasonable rate. You can continue to execute on that business plan and get to the other side of the rainbow. Yeah, James, uh, you said just a moment ago, prepare yourself. Well, the best way I know to prepare yourself for a huge landslide of being able to pick and choose which foreclosures you want to buy is by getting the money lined up with private money. You know, I remember back in 2007, eight and nine, when I lost my line, when I lost my lines of credit, we had all these foreclosures coming. And of course, this is a whole different scenario as to why all these foreclosures are now opening up this year. I mean, foreclosures year to date right now, are 187% up above year-to-date last year. And so 
I remember my, the, my first year of losing my line of credit at the bank, James, I tripled my business. And how was it that I tripled my business when the banks shut down and were not loaning money? It was because of the private money that I was able to line up. And then I was able to pick and choose which deals it was that I wanted to do. That's how we tripled our business by having access to the capital. And I can tell you, quite frankly, having access to the capital is actually more important than the actual interest rate of the points that you're going to pay. But again, in this world of private money, it's you that's, uh, that's you know, determining what rates you're going to pay by, you know, setting the rate. You set the rate, you set the term. But um, yeah, as you just said, James, you know, in every market where there's chaos, there is just as much opportunity. Uh, but you got to prepare yourself, right? Um, and you also said a moment ago, James, you know, you may be having, you know, you had that three-year note or that five-year note and the banks may be calling that due. Well, guess what? You can also use private money to refinance existing properties that you have in case they need to be refinanced. You're not using private money just for purchases, but you're also going to use it, you know, for refinancing. Um, any other thoughts, any other thoughts, James, on the market that we're looking at? No, just the cash is going to be king. Like you said, if, if you have access to the capital, uh, the sellers of this short paper that is coming, as you noted, foreclosures are already up 187%. I think we have a long way to go, uh, short of a massive pivot uh, by the Fed. I know in London, we, we saw a bit of a pivot and it'll be interesting how long the Fed can resist following suit there, which would just push this problem further down the line and compound it exponentially. But short of that, I think we're in for a couple of years where if you have access to that cash, um, that's what folks are going to want to know on the other side of the table that are short selling and, and writing this bad debt off is, can you pick it up? Do you have the cash? Do you have proof of funds? Can you close quickly? And if it's yes, 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 you're up to the top of the list and you can pick and choose those deals. I can't think of a better reason why someone would get involved in private money right now in order to get ready. James, I want to wrap up our final segment here uh, on raising private money, talking about your mindset. You have done some huge deals. Um, you know, so th there's one there's one mindset for single family houses and investing in those. There's an entirely different mindset for doing commercial deals, much, much bigger deals. If someone's never done that or is having trouble getting their mind wrapped around doing that size of a deal, but want to, how do you speak with someone on going from that $200,000, $300,000 single family house to a multi-million dollar commercial project? So without a doubt, educate yourself. You know, there are so many tools available today that weren't available just 20 years ago when we were doing it. Um, you know, there's a famous interview with Elon Musk and the interviewer asked, you know, how did you, you learn or how did you get into this, this place where you're sending rockets up into space? And he had said that he, he learned watching YouTube and the interviewer chuckled and, and he was obviously there's a lot more behind it than that, but he was pretty stoic in his, his response. There's so much information available out there. Uh, take advantage of it. Go hustle. Put the grind in. Find a mentor. This this community is amazing. If if you reach out to ten investors, chances are you're going to get two or three of them to sit down and have lunch, or at least jump on a Zoom and help you out. Uh, there's a lot of good folks out there that want to see you know the next run of people to get in the game. That's the way it works. Pass that knowledge on. Uh, so I think that's the single most important thing. Don't be afraid of of making the leap because of the size of the transaction. Just make sure that you're educated. Make sure that you understand. And maybe for the first few, you have someone in the deal that's been here before, that understands what's around the corner, that understands how to build a, as bulletproof of a model as you can to get to that other side of the rainbow. Uh, but that's it. If you've done your homework and, and you've got a solid business plan and you're going to put the hustle in, there should be nothing that stops you. 
James, you uh, recently launched uh, your podcast called Pre-Real, and I had such the pleasure of being a guest on your podcast recently. Uh, your website is www.prereal, that's P-R-E-R-E-A-L.com, prereal.com. Um, James, talk a moment about uh, this podcast, what the focus is, and I mean, you're already you know, being heard in over 60 countries now. Uh, why did you start the podcast and um, and talk about it? So for us, it was uh, a couple of things. I was very uncomfortable doing this, to be candid. Uh, terrible fear of speaking. Um, hated to do the videos. Hated to make the content. I had all this knowledge kind of rattling around up in here, but it was very difficult for me to articulate it and to get on a show. Uh, and when coronavirus hit, it, it just felt like the perfect opportunity for us to find a way to stay in touch with our customers, our clients, uh, folks that we've done deals with for decades now. And it was a way for us to get some of the local folks on and get their message out about what was happening in the community. And, you know, we, we saw this as a uh, a personal challenge, uh, but also a, a benefit for the community. And it just kind of took off from there. Again, you know, you have all of the, the, the concerns. Who's going to come on my show? Nobody wants to talk to me. What am I going to talk about? And if you, you just have a conversation about real estate, if you're passionate about it, it's easy. When I'm in my subject matter, Jay, I can, I can go uh, like we're doing now, right? So uh, for me, it was a way to get out of my comfort zone and provide a conduit for folks in my community to, to connect and get their message out during COVID. And it just took off from there because, again, the community is, is amazing. Folks are so willing to help and, and so willing to participate. And, and, you know, we've got a we're booked out now for months because people just want to get their word out and their message out. And uh, it was a great opportunity. Um, it, it's something that was really hard for me to do. But it I could say at this point, it was the single uh, most profound thing that I have done in my 25 years in the business. Is prereal.com the best way for someone to connect with you? Yeah, they just jump on the, the website, prereal.com. All our information is on there and you can get in touch with me or anyone from the team. That's awesome. James, thank you so much for taking the time uh, to come here and be on Raising Private Money. What an inspiration you are, man. Thank you so much. I appreciate you, Jay. Thank you. All right. Thank you. Well, there you have it, my friend. Another episode of Raising Private Money. And I need your help. I need you to think of someone that you could share this episode with that would really make a difference in their real estate investing uh, career or their interest in real estate investing. What an amazing guest uh, that I've had on today. So please share the uh, episode with someone else. And if you're watching on YouTube, be sure and click that bell uh, so you don't miss out on any other uh, fantastic shows that we have. Uh, be sure to follow us uh, if you are on iTunes. Um, we love the ratings and the reviews. So we look forward to having you join us right back here on the next episode of Raising Private Money. Are you feeling inspired by the knowledge you gained in this episode? Then head over to jconner.com slash money guide. That's jconner.com slash money guide and download your free guide that shares seven reasons why private money will skyrocket your real estate investing business right now. Again, that's jconner.com slash money guide to get your free guide. We'll see you next time on Raising Private Money with Jay Connor.